Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 634. Sweating, Electrolytes, and How to Combat Dehydration. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Hi, I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about something that I think affects many people and they don't even know it, but it can be something that will save your life if you follow the uh, easy instructions that I give you. Now this has to do with those of us who spend time outside in the heat during the summer, which is most of us, and um, and it's natural to sweat and it's good for us to sweat because our skin is our largest organ and by sweating we're removing toxins but with those toxins we're removing our electrolytes and you probably never thought about it you've never heard about electrolytes but it's very important for you to always have normal electrolytes in your body I learned about electrolytes in medical school when it had to do with someone who had kidney failure or someone who had a severe illness and their electrolytes were off balance and we had to replace them or we had to water them down so that they would actually help the patient's brain stay sharp and help the patient stay alive. But electrolytes are so much more than that. They're actually little substances um, that are sodium, you've heard of all of these, potassium, phosphorus, magnesium, and calcium. And those are the, those are the main electrolytes that are required for your body to stay healthy, but for you actually to be strong as you exercise during the summer. Um, You're not an NFL football player, but if you were, you would already know about this because NFL players and people who exercise as their career out in the heat have to replace their electrolytes and water to keep themselves from passing out or even dying. It is that important. So they use Gatorade. Gatorade was a huge, important discovery, and that was in the 60s. And Gatorade saved many of the NFL players' lives while they are sweating out in the heat. Basically, Gatorade is water, electrolytes, and sugar. And all of those things are needed when you, are, you have extensive exercise or, um, or if you're a professional Um, athlete. All of these things are important, especially if you're in the heat. Now, you may be somebody who just gardens in the heat, and you you go out, you garden, and the first two hours you're fine, you drink some water, you have a couple bottles of water, and then all of a sudden you just feel weak. And this is what I hear from my patients, because many times patients have uh, felt this, and they think, "Um, I'm weak because my muscles aren't working because I don't have enough testosterone, which is, in this case, not the truth. (laughs) That's not the correct diagnosis. The correct diagnosis is your testosterone is still working and still making your, your muscles burn calories and stay healthy, but they have to be fed. And to be fed, they need electrolytes. They need to have their calcium, magnesium, they need to have their sodium and chloride, and Honestly, if they don't have that, your muscles literally become weak, and you feel weak. You feel like you're going to pass out. You may feel cold. You may feel chilled, Um, and that's when you need to go inside, and you need to not just drink water, but you need to replace your electrolytes. Now, how do you do that? You replace your electrolytes either with Gatorade, but I, I don't suggest Gatorade to my people over 40 because honestly, it's too much sugar. I mean, if you're a young, healthy player, not a problem. You're burning off that sugar. But many people who are older actually become more insulin resistant even when they're just taking sugar as a uh, recovery kind of a, um, an element. So 
What I tell my patients is to use G2, which is half the sugar or less, or G0, which has no sugar in it, but still has the electrolytes and the water. And every third bottle of water should have electrolytes in it. Now, I personally found that something called Noon, N-U-U-N, was more convenient for me. They're tablets. And you can just take a tablet, break it in half, and put it in your water bottle when you are um, playing golf for five hours or uh, you're out in the in the summer doing yard work and you're out there for a long time, you also have to be concerned about heat and getting heat stroke, which would make you feel chilled and make you feel weak too. So you can't be too hot and you also have to have your electrolytes. Now, when I started really thinking about this was not because my patients came in and said, I feel weak in the summer when I'm outside and I was concerned that maybe they had something, some big illness um, and I gave them electrolytes or told them to take them, and then they were fine. It wasn't then. It was when I had a personal experience with um, playing golf in the summer. Now, I don't play golf a lot, but when I do, it's usually for a charitable event, you know, where they you pay money for a charity, and then you're in a golf event, and they are usually in the middle of the summer. In Missouri, it's really hot and humid, and it is a very sweaty kind of an activity, but it's not just golf, it's golf for five to six hours because it's a charity. So everybody's like having fun, they're talking, they're not paying attention to playing golf as much as they would if they were just playing as a competition. So I found myself drinking multiple bottles of water and after I got to about the fourth bottle of water while I was out there, I would start feeling weak. And then the next step would, I would feel fuzzy. I was having trouble getting my words and talking. And then I started feeling chilled because the heat also was getting to me. And I had a problem finishing these events. Well, my diagnostic brain moved in um, on the subject and I started wondering why that was because at the time, uh, this is several years ago, I wasn't as aware of electrolyte loss as I am now. So I went back and I did some studies on it and studies in how much uh, you can lose your electrolytes, especially if you're on a diuretic, if you're on a blood pressure medicine, if you're on any other kind of medicine for, um, for heart issues, that can even augment it and make it happen sooner. Uh, and you are going to need more water and more electrolytes than most people. As we get older, we need even more. So uh, when I finally figured it out, went bingo in my brain's I finally said, okay, I'm always going to go to these events with five or six bottles of water, or I'm going to make sure I can get them, and I'm going to always have my electrolytes with me, and every third normal-sized bottle of water, I'm going to add a tablet for noon, N-U-U-N, which is the electrolytes. It has to be noon sport, because now they have noon vitamins, noon, all kinds of things you can put in water, but this is noon sport with the electrolytes. Once I did that... Voila, I could finish one of these five hour hot, sweaty tournaments, which was, was amazing to me because I always felt like a wuss when I'd have to just stop halfway through the, uh, the uh, round. So you may be relating to this, you may not be, but it's important that if you or your spouse are out in the heat, even if you don't get as sick as I did, or you don't have the same reaction, that you replace your electrolytes and your water because you just don't think very well. Your body doesn't work very well. Your kidneys are stressed if you are not replacing these teeny tiny little elements that you need to stay alive because every part of your body needs it, especially your kidneys. So the symptoms that I, I touched on, uh, but I'll read the list of them. One of the symptoms is just having a dry mouth and feeling thirsty, obviously. Um, being restless, feeling like you have to keep moving. Now, I have ADHD, so I always keep moving, so that doesn't help me. But when you start feeling confused and your, and your brain feels fuzzy, I used to feel like I was playing golf in jello, like I couldn't move as fast, like it was slow motion. So that was part of the confusion. Um, if you uh, are feeling weak, like you can't stand up anymore, that's pretty severe dehydration and lack of electrolytes. Um, Muscle weakness and muscle spasms. Many of my patients say, I do great 
until night after I've played golf in the heat, and they haven't replaced their electrolytes, so they don't think they need to because they're still thinking and they're still feeling normal. They go to bed, and then their muscles just cramp up, and they just can't stay in bed because it hurts so badly. Well, I have them take electrolytes, and I have them take magnesium especially to help stop that kind of cramping that occurs after losing a lot of your electrolytes through sweat. Um, some patients have fatigue, and that's one of the things that people bring me. They say, I'm fatigued when this happens. Fatigue can also be that you didn't eat enough, and God forbid that you, play, that you drink alcohol when you're playing golf, because if you're out in the heat and you're sweating and you're drinking alcohol, you're making the whole process worse. You're, you're losing even more electrolytes than those people who are just sweating and drinking water. So you can have heart palpitations. You can have uh, trouble with your GI system, constipation, nausea, and vomiting. Um, it can even slow your heart rate in severe cases. You can have a headache, difficulty breathing, high or low blood pressure, and sometimes fainting. So those are the symptoms of an electrolyte um, imbalance associated with sweating and exercise. So look for those, and sometimes we have to have our spouse or our partner look for those in us because truly it makes you feel kind of slow mentally, so you may not be aware that it's as bad as it is, but your spouse may be aware that it's bad because you start acting different. And so that's when you need to go from just drinking water to drinking something with electrolytes in it. So. I just want to be clear, I'm not talking about electrolyte balances associated with medical illnesses because those have an entirely different kind of treatment, but I am talking about day-to-day -day problems um, associated with uh, sweating in the heat and lack of fluids and lack of electrolytes. Now, taking electrolytes and water may not be enough. If you've actually passed out or been very hot and had severe confusion, you need to call 911 and go to the hospital. You need to get off the golf cart, you need to stop playing softball or stop running if you're in a marathon and tell somebody to call an ambulance. You need IV fluids, you may not make it through this. This is something that can actually kill you. So don't be strong, don't be brave, don't be the, you know, the superwoman, superman. You need to say, okay, I need some help. And then you'll get hydrated with IV fluids that have electrolytes in them. And you will actually feel so much better and recover so much faster if you let medical people help you. And that's one of the ways. If, if it's just heat stroke, you will need ice packs under the areas, like under your arms, in your groin, behind, around your neck, you'll have to get cooler, but the IV fluids also are necessary and so are the electrolytes. So every three to four bottles of water, every three wa bottles of water, you need to have a bottle of water with electrolytes or you need to have uh, medical treatment and get IV fluids. There are some other even more severe treatments for severe illness that um, can happen, but as long as you get to the ER, they know exactly what to do. You should be treated for this preventively, not when you're dizzy, not when you're nauseated, not when you're starting to pass out, but before that. Drink plenty of water, and that's very important. Don't drink alcohol while you're exercising. I realize that um, the, uh, there are some new sports that you can drink alcohol while you play, say, pickleball. But, you know, if you're playing it in Phoenix and it's really hot and you're sweating, then that's going to make your dehydration worse. Um, you can drink Gatorade, you can drink G2 or G0 or Noon, I have Noon tablets with you. I actually carry them with me whenever I'm on doing anything like hiking, anything in the heat, so that I can replace my electrolytes if I start feeling bad. If you have the symptoms of dehydration, you're dry, you have muscle cramps, you stop sweating, um, that's severe. That's one of the things that makes you, uh, that should make you call an ambulance. Just a personal story. Um, my husband, who's 70, was 71 at the time, he's 72 now, and I was 67, I'm 68 now, and our best friends, who are 71 and 60, went to Cinque Terre in Italy uh, this past year. And we were in northern Italy, 
And it was in September. It wasn't in the middle of the summer, but it was hot. And we were really excited to hike between two different cities in Cinque Terre. Cinque Terre is five different little cities that sit up on cliffs, most of them. And then you, you have a sheer drop um, between them. And you actually walk on a tiny little trail in between them. And there's many steps up, many steps down, and it takes hours. So uh, we were going between Monta Rosa and Vernaza. It was beautiful, and we were really looking forward to it, but the whole day started wrong. So we weren't prepared for what we got ourselves into. So you always have to be prepared. We um, thought we would be hiking for about two and a half to maybe three hours, and that we would be starting early before 10 o'clock, like nine o'clock in the morning, and be done by noon. So we believed that we would not be hiking most of the day in the heat of the day. Uh, we had a transportation problem. The ferries didn't run because it was windy. So we had to take a car into town. Then we had to wait to get on a train. Then we had, I mean, it took us, we didn't even start hiking until 1030. So that was two problems. We were going to be hiking at the heat of the day. We didn't have enough water bottles. We didn't think about it, that we weren't prepared for hiking at that time of day. And I did have my noon. I did have that with me in my backpack. But we also hadn't eaten since early in the morning because we were spending all this time trying to get to where we wanted to start the hike. So we, it took us longer than two and a half hours. And we were literally on donkey steps, which were really high steps, going way up, way down, way up. It, I mean, it was kind of like a roller coaster, only you were hiking it. And it was very hot. And we were behind the eight ball before we even started. So as we were walking, you can kind of imagine the, the rest. John, uh, my husband is 6'4 and 240, maybe 245. So his body requires more water than mine. He's bigger. Um, and he had the same amount of water as I did. And we had drunk the two bottles of water we each had for ourselves by the middle of the, the midpoint of the hike. And John was the most affected. We were all very dry. We were all having weakness, and we were all having some symptoms of dehydration. However, um, John was the worst, and he literally started acting funny, talking funny. He was weak. He was tripping, which he never does. Uh, he's coordinated. And he said, he kept saying, I, ha I have to lie down. I have to lie down. And we're in a, we're on a, trail that's this wide and there's a sheer drop down to the ocean which is I mean I don't know how many stories it was it was it's why it's beautiful you're way high up and you're looking down at the ocean but it was dangerous to lie down in this path and there's a lot of people going by so um, in the end we we got him to a place where there was shade and there was a little a little area where he could lie down he lay he laid down in the dirt for 20 minutes we gave him our water and we gave him two of those noon tablets in half a bottle of water that we had left. And he, I mean, I honestly thought there's no way out of this. You can't call an ambulance. There's no one that can take a, a guy this big down this path to the nearest city. So I kind of had to depend on prayer and electrolytes and water. So we had passers-by that gave us more water. We, got, we poured some water on him to cool him off, but I was taking his pulse, and his pulse was very fast and very thready, meaning it was just like this. It wasn't boom, boom, boom. It was dit, 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 and it was very, very light, like his blood pressure was very low, and he was acting very unusual. So he slept for 20 minutes, but I was taking his pulse the whole time, and we finally, he finally rallied after getting some electrolytes back and getting the water. And he finally got to Ver Vernaza. And if you've ever seen a picture of that, there's a beach in Vernaza that actually goes down from the city. So when he, walked, when he got there, he, they don't have a whole lot of ice in Europe. So it wasn't about getting packs of ice to put around him. He, went in, he just went into the ocean. He was in his clothes. He just walked into the ocean, got cool, came back, and took a nap on the beach. He looked like he was homeless. <laughs> We, he, was fil he was filthy. He had dirt all over him from lying down on the trail. And we got some more water and some more electrolytes down him. 
And then we finally got him some new clothes because people were walking around him like he was scary looking lying on the beach. In any case, um, that was a close call. And they didn't have an ER in Vernaza. And so we had to just get him to drink water. And he was very combative because his brain wasn't working as usual. He's like, I don't want to drink that. I don't, I don't, I don't want to drink that. That's how people act when they don't have enough electrolytes and they don't have enough water. And I was afraid that he was getting kidney damage, brain damage. In any case, we got enough water down him just by bullying him to drink the water. My friends and I did. And finally, he was almost okay by the next morning. That's how long it took. And so we went back, put him in a cold room, kept pushing water down and electrolytes, and he got better. But that's how severe this can be. And it can creep up on you. And you can be the most prepared person in the world for a circumstance you think you're headed into, and then everything changes and you're not prepared. So you have to think, well, what if, what if the timing isn't right? What if it's hotter than we think? What if it's longer than we think? You know, if we're hiking or if we're playing a game, uh, we have to have everything with us so that we can prevent this from happening because it's a lot harder to recover once you've gotten to that point where your brain's not working very well. At home, we would have taken him to the emergency room, started IVs, had a doctor look at him, do some blood tests, make sure he was okay before putting him in a cool room. But, but since we weren't in the U.S., and we weren't in a big city in Europe, that's all we had. So I had to use my um, Red Cross, basically Red Cross training. And, and he, to this day, he has no damage because of it. So don't let this happen to your family. And even if they're arguing with you, they're not thinking clearly because they don't have enough oxygen, they don't have enough water, they don't ha have enough anything. It's kind of like, it's almost like they're drunk. So, but they're not, they're, they're just dehydrated and they have lack of electrolytes. So just remember this and always be prepared with your water and your electrolytes so that you can take care of yourself and you can take care of your family in the summer. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BiobalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BiobalanceHealth.